Legion. The account of Jesus casting the legion of demons into a herd of pigs is found in Matthew 8, 28 to 34. Matthew 8, 28 to 34, New King James Version. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from them there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So when they had come out, they went into the herd of swine, and suddenly the whole herd of swine ran violently down the steep place into the sea and perished in the water. Then those who kept them fled, and they went away into the city and told everything, including what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to depart from their region. According to this story, demons inhabited human bodies. The demons pleaded with Jesus to accept their offer, which he did. The demons leave the men and enter the herd of pigs after receiving permission from Jesus. When the demons entered the herd, they caused the herd to become crazed, and they ran off a cliff into the Sea of Galilee. In an ironic twist, the demons' desire to avoid eternal punishment led to the demise of their earthly hosts. Because it served his purposes, Jesus had no reason not to accept their proposal. First, it resulted in the liberation of the men from the demons. Second, pigs were considered unclean animals under Jewish law, making them an ideal symbol and safe haven for unclean spirits, i.e. demons. Third, accepting their proposal had no effect on the demons' eternal fate on Judgment Day. More importantly, Jesus did not commit sin by accepting the demons' offer. Demons knew exactly who Jesus was, Son of God, and were aware of their ultimate doom. The account does not explain why the demons begged to be allowed to enter the swine. It's possible they didn't want to leave the area where they had been successful in causing havoc among the people. Perhaps they were drawn to the filthy animals because they were filthy themselves. The demons may have made this strange request because it was their last chance to avoid confinement in the abyss, the place where evil spirits are doomed. Revelation 9, 1-6 And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Whatever their reasoning, it is clear from the account that demons possessed a little power on their own, and were powerless to act without Jesus' permission. As Christians, we can take comfort in knowing that the forces of the enemy of our souls are completely under God's control and can only act in ways he permits. The Bible does not explain Jesus' reasoning, but demonstrating his sovereign power over demons 
could be one of the reasons he cast them into the pigs. If the pigs' owners were Jews, Jesus could have been chastising them for breaking Mosaic law, which forbids Jews from eating or keeping unclean animals like swine. In any case, the owners were so terrified of being in the presence of such spiritual power that they made no claim for restitution for the loss of their property and pleaded with Jesus to leave the area. The people were astounded, but unconvinced. They wanted no more of Jesus Christ. This demonstrates their heart's hardness and desire to remain in sin. The healed demoniac, on the other hand, displayed true faith and repentance of a changed heart and begged to follow Jesus. Perhaps the unmistakable difference between the saved and the unsaved served as a lesson for the disciples and everyone else who witnessed the event. Mark 5, 17-20, Amplified Bible So the people began to beg with Jesus to leave their region. As he was stepping into the boat, the Gentile man, who had been demon-possessed, was begging with him, asking that he might go with him as a disciple. Jesus did not let him come, but instead he said to him, Go home to your family and tell them all the great things that the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So he obeyed and went away and began to publicly proclaim in Decapolis, the region of the ten Hellenistic cities, all the great things that Jesus had done for him, and all the people were astonished. The last two verses were quite surprising, and I believe they encourage us to think further. The herdsmen fled, and going into the city, they told everything, especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. It doesn't read, especially about the pigs. It reads, especially about what had happened to the demon-possessed men. In other words, they emphasized deliverance, liberation, freedom, and healing. Behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Jesus demands a choice. Love him and his salvation, or love your prosperity and your wealth. Two amazing things have happened in this Gentile region, both unexpectedly and through the power of Jesus. The first incredible thing that occurred was that two demon-possessed men were now free, and their humanity was restored. They are no longer ruined. Their humanity is restored to them. This prompts me to consider another instance in the Bible in which Satan attempted to bargain with God, namely the first two chapters of Job. Satan asks God for permission to afflict Job, and God grants him permission, which proves to be a test of Job's faith in God. Job would have to choose between loving God and trusting him, or loving his possessions, family and health more, and cursing God for taking them away. In other words, God used Satan to put Job to the test. That, it appears to me, is what is happening here. Jesus enters the Gentile world. He defeats the devil. He releases the prisoner. He portrays himself as a great deliverer, capable of resurrecting life and hope. However, he also takes away a herd of pigs, the livelihood and wealth of some community members. The story appears to have multiple meaning. Jesus is the divine Son of God. Second, unclean spirits are defeated by Jesus. Jesus frees the captives and gives hope to the hopeless, including Gentiles.